Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And by the way, none of my work is copyrighted, so anybody wants to copy anything and post it elsewhere, go for it. Uh, this is a, uh, yeah, just a public disclaimer. This is going to be Pleasure Part 2. Part 1 was about doing those things that are pleasing to the Lord, the Lord's pleasure. This Part 2 is going to be on those that do their own pleasure. Opening verse. Get your King James Bible. We're going to turn to the book of Proverbs, chapter 21 and verse 17. He that loveth pleasure shall be a poor man. So that's why I never had any money as a kid. Yeah, that explains, that's the story of my life right there. Because I loved pleasure. He that loveth pleasure shall be a poor man. He that loveth wine and oil shall not be rich. There you go. Now that reminds me of a story. Jesus had a story for us. So let's go to the book of Luke, chapter 15. Yeah, I wasn't going to read the whole chapter, but you know what? Anything with the words of Jesus is worthy to read the whole thing, right? Luke, chapter 15, verse 1. Then, near, uh, then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. But uh, if you're listening to liberals, it was the Republicans. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, Republicans and sinners. Yeah. Um, and by the way, publicans were the tax collectors. I guess they would be the IRS agents. For those of you in the USSA, so so all the tax collectors and the bad people went came to, to listen to Jesus. Well, that would have included me. Uh, no, I didn't work for the IRS, but yeah. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, "This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them." And he, Jesus, spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? Hmm. Jesus is the great shepherd, right? And the church is called his sheep, right? And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. Do you know that the Lord lays our sins on his shoulders? Oh, yeah. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep, which was lost. I say unto you, that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth. Yeah, God wants sinners to repent. That likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety-nine just persons which need no repentance. Yeah, you got the ninety and nine that were you know, didn't do all the evil stuff that I did as a kid. Verse 8, Either what woman, having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it? And when she hath found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors saying, together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the piece which I had lost. Why silver? 
Well, you may not know it, but gold in the Bible is representative of God. I mean, how do you spell gold? Uh, remove the L and you got God, right? But why silver? Redeemed mankind is likened unto silver, believe it or not. Maybe I should prove that. Malachi 3. Minor Prophets, Old Testament. Verse 1. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. Who is the messenger that prepared the way? John the Baptist. Oh, yeah. The messenger of the covenant, Christ, the new covenant. You got the old, you got the new. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who may abide the day of his coming? Not the sinners, not the wicked. And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire. Oh, yeah. I did it a whole playlist, Bible study on fire. I think it was like a dozen things on it. Yeah. And like fuller's soap. Uh, what is fuller's soap? Well, when you have a garment and you want to make it white and clean, you fuller soap. And it would take it and make it a bright white. You know, and what kind of... what When you get clothing at the marriage supper of the lamb, when the lamb gives out garments washed in his blood, what color are they? White robes. Fuller soap will make white robes. You know, there is so much symbolism in the Bible. It's just unbelievable. Verse 3. And he... Who? Christ. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. Well, when you take, when you, uh, you ever heard of a oil refinery? Well, they're taking oil and they're separating it into its components. Well, this part's going to be motor oil. This part's going to be gasoline. This part's going to be kerosene. This part's going to be diesel. They break it down. So that's a, a refinery. Well, it also works with metals. You know, when you want to take gold or silver, you're cutting it out of the rocks and you melt it down and then you scrape away the stuff that you don't really want and then you try, you purify the gold or the silver, the, you know, it's, I, you know, it used to be uh, gold, 99.9% .9 gold, or silver, 99.9% .9 silver. So, yeah. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi. Now, who was Levi? They were the one of the 12 tribes. They were the tribe of priests that were set apart to do the Lord's work in the tabernacle, later the temple. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi. Purify them of what? sin and he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness see the Lord is comparing his people with silver now somebody once I don't know I don't remember but somebody once went to a, a guy that 
uh, purified silver. And he asked him, when you're melting down silver, how do you know when it's ready? He says, oh, well, that's simple. When you melt silver down, you look into the container, and when you can see your reflection, like a mirror, you know it's done. When God is refining his silver, his people, and he can look at them and see his reflection. You know, we were made in his image. When he, we can get rid of all our sins and everything else, and he sees him in us, his Holy Spirit, he knows it's done. Yeah, think about that. So, the woman that found the silver, piece, yeah. And who's the woman that found the silver piece? Is not the woman the church, the bride of Christ? I think so. And, and, and why the ten pieces? Why ten? Ten tribes of Israel that were lost, probably, maybe, I don't know. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. Luke 15 and verse 11. And he, Jesus said, a certain man had two sons. Mm. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. Okay. Who does his father represent? God the Father? Could be. And who's the younger? Uh, some people say the older and the younger. Well, we'll get to that later. So, the younger one's coming to his dad and saying, Hey, Dad, um, can you give me my inheritance, please? So. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with riotous living. Pleasure. He, he did eat, drink, and be merry. And boy, I'll tell you what, I, I could... I could tell you some stories. Not not my life, but yeah. I knew a guy that uh, got hurt in a bad accident at work. Got a lot of money. Had two gorgeous girlfriends. Soon as the money was gone, so were they. Yeah, I saw that one coming. So the young son took his journey of the far country and wasted his substance with riotous living threw his money away on wine women and song and when he had spent all there arose a mighty famine in that land and he began to be in want famine of bread famine of the word a lord maybe both and he began to be hungry and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him unto his fields to feed swine. A pig farmer. I don't know if any of you have been by a pig farm, but let me tell you something. They're disgusting. And they smell disgusting. Matter of fact, if you go to buy land, a lot of times they'll say you cannot use this as a pig farm. It'll be in the covenants. The contract. Yeah, they're disgusting creatures. And, the, and he went and joined himself unto a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. He's going to 
He's going to eat pig food. And nobody's going to give him nothing. Life's not fair, people. You know, it's one thing I learned. Rich people, the only thing they care about is money. They don't care about nothing else but money. I remember one time I was working in Palm Beach, you know, where Celine Dion lives and Don the Donald lives and the Kennedys and all, you know, those kind of people. And I was working on somebody's house. Middle of summer in Florida. It's in the 90s probably. And I asked them if I could have a glass of cold water. You know what they told me? Oh, the garden hose is over there in the corner. Uh, the garden hose. Yeah, my, uh, my maid doesn't come until, you know, two days from today. Gee, I'm, I, I'm sorry that it would be too much trouble for you to take a glass and put some ice in it and give me some an ice water. Uh, and my dirty, unwashed lips might actually touch your glass and it might have to sit in your sink for a day until your maid shows up. Gee, I'm really sorry about that. What does the Bible say about uh, those kind of people? Well, Matthew 10, 42 comes to mind, Jesus speaking. And whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water, only in the name of a disciple, verily I say to you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. Yeah, drink out of that dirty hot hose, you dirty person, you. So nobody gave this guy anything to eat. He's eating pig's food. Verse 17. And when he came to himself, you know, he smacked himself in the forehead and said, I could have had a V8. Now he came to his senses and he said, how many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned. Those are probably the three most precious words to the Lord. I have sinned. Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. And am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. You know, this is the kind of thing that the Lord loves to hear. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet. You know, this kid didn't even have shoes. That's what you call being poor. And bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat, and be merry. For this my son was dead. Spiritually? Is there a spiritual application here? For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Now his elder brother was in the field, and he came and drew nigh to the house, and he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked, What in the world is going on here? Oh, that, well, that's the Bob translation. And asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he, the older brother, and he was angry, and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment. 
And yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son is come, which hath devoured his living with harlots, you don't know what a harlot is, it's a whore. Yeah, eat, drink, and be merry. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he, the father, said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead and is alive again, and was lost, and is found. How does this, everybody knows the story of the prodigal son. Everybody, right? But you think about it. Who is the older son? The older son, my opinion, represents Judah, the king tribe, and the younger and 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 Levi, the priest tribe, that never left the father. And the younger son represents probably Israel. Northern Israel left. And they got caught up into Satanism and God divorced them. Let's take a look at Jeremiah 3 8 real quick. All right, let's go to Jeremiah 3 real quick. Verse 1. They say, if a man put away his wife, you know, divorce, and she go away from him and become another man's, shall he return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? But thou, who? Israel. But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers. Yet return again to me, saith the Lord. Lift up thine eyes unto the high places. What are the high places? Those are the places where they used to try to get close to heaven, worshiping devils. You know, people look at all the pyramids. Those were places of worship for the devils. Yeah. Think about it. There's pyramids all over the world. Mexico, South America, Latin America, besides Egypt. Egypt, Bible never talks good about Egypt, in my opinion, that I found. Never. And what is it famous for? The pyramids. The high places. That's why they were always flat on top. So that they could do their sacrifices and worship the devils. Lift up thine eyes unto the high places and see where thou hast not been lying with. Yeah, what, what, what devil did you lie with? And not uh, telling a falsehood either. In the ways hast thou sat for them, as the Arabian in the wilderness, and thou hast polluted the land with thy whoredoms and with thy wickedness. Sounds like modern day America and the United uh, European Union. Yeah, and the UK and basically every other Western country. Verse 3, Therefore the showers have been withholden, the rain. Do you know what? When there is no rain, God says it's for punishment against a wicked people. I think I mentioned it before, but I was in Texas at a restaurant. There was a sign up on the restaurant and a church bulletin there saying, please pray for rain. And I looked at that and I thought, never going to happen. Pray for rain. No. Rain doesn't happen. Repentance always comes first. They should have been telling the people to repent and then pray. Gee, Lord, we've been wicked, but, you know, we want to continue in our sin. So please give us some rain so we got food for our cattle. No, turn from your wicked ways. Therefore the showers have been withholden, and there hath been no latter rain. And thou hadst a whore's forehead. Don't ask, because I don't know. Thou refusest to be ashamed. Wilt 
thou not from this time cry unto me? My father, thou art the guide of my youth. Will he reserve his anger forever? Will he keep it to the end? Behold, thou hast spoken and done evil things as thou couldest. The Lord said unto me in the days of Josiah the king. Now there were two kingdoms. There was the northern kingdom of Israel and the northern kingdom of Judah. Josiah was a king of Judah, a good king. Probably one of the last good kings Judah had. He was a really good king. I want to meet him one day. Yeah, you know who was king of the northern Israel kingdom? Ahab with his wife Jezebel. Yeah. The Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king, Hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel hath done? She has gone up upon every high mountain and under every green tree, and there hath played the harlot, a whore, a spiritual whore. And I said after she had done all these things, Turn thou unto me. Come back, come, return to me. Turn thou unto me, but she returned not. And her treacherous sister Judah saw it. All the wickedness that Israel was doing, Judah was watching. Judah knew. Oh, yeah. And it came to pass through the lightness of her whoredom. Oh, I'm sorry. Verse 8. <laughs> I almost skipped that. The important part. I almost skipped it. And her treacherous sister Judah saw it. And I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. Boy, you'll never hear that taught in any demon nominational church. God divorced Israel? Oh, we can't have that. No, God has an everlasting covenant with the uh, uh, you-know-whos, they'll tell you. God said he divorced Israel. Divorced them. Here's your bill of divorce. Here's your divorce decree. Get out of here. I'm putting you away. I'm kicking you out. Down the road, you whore. Well, that's the Bob translation. And I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. Yet her treacherous, treacherous sister, Judah, feared not, but went and played the harlot also. And it came to pass through the lightness of her whoredom that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and with stocks. Idols, people. Verse 10. And yet for all this, her treacherous sister Judah hath not turned unto me with her whole heart, but feignedly, saith the Lord. She didn't turn to the Lord with her whole heart, but she pretended to. Oh, yeah. And the Lord said unto me, The backsliding Israel hath justified herself more than treacherous Judah. As bad as Israel was, Judah was worse. Verse 12. Go and proclaim these words toward the north and say, Return, thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord, and I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you, for I am merciful. Thank the Lord for that. For I am merciful, saith the Lord, and I will not keep anger forever. Only acknowledge thine iniquity, that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God, and hast scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree, and ye have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion." That's a remnant, people. That's verse 15. And I will give you pastors 
No, not green grass. Ministers. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Oh, yeah. And it shall come to pass when ye be multiplied and increased in the land. In those days, saith the Lord, they shall say no more, the ark of the covenant of the Lord. Neither shall it come to mind. Neither shall they remember it. Neither shall they visit it. Neither shall they, neither shall that be done any more. At that time, they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord. When is Jerusalem going to be called the throne of the Lord? New Jerusalem, when it comes down from heaven, that's when, not today. Today, the Jerusalem is going to be called the throne of the Antichrist, the beast, the man of sin, the son of perdition. At that time, they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord, and all the nations shall be gathered unto it. To the name of the Lord, to Jerusalem, neither shall they walk any more after the imagination of their evil heart. In those days, the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel. See, they're not the same. The house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north. Huh. What's north of Israel? Last time I looked at a map, it was Europe. Yeah. Uh, what? What? What continent uh, built all the churches and printed all the Bibles? Uh, let's see. Japan? No. Korea? No. Mexico? No. Uh, Europe? Yeah. Yeah. In those days, the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north, to the land which I have given for an inheritance unto your fathers. Wow. But I said, How shall I put thee among the children and give thee a pleasant land, a goodly heritage of the host of nations? And I said, Thou shalt call me my father, and shalt not turn away from me. Surely, as a wife treacherously departeth from her husband, so have ye dealt treacherously with me, O house of Israel, saith the Lord. Jeremiah 3, 21. A voice was heard upon the high places, weeping and supplications of the children of Israel, for they have perverted their way, and they have forgotten the Lord their God. Is anything any different back then than today? No. No. Verse 22, return ye backsliding children, and I will heal your backslidings. Behold, we come unto thee, for thou art the Lord, our God. Truly in vain is salvation hoped for from the hills. You're not going to find salvation in the hills. And from the multitude of mountains, truly in the Lord our God is the salvation of Israel, for shame hath devoured the labor of our fathers from our youth, their flocks and their herds, their sons and their daughters. We lie down in our shame, and our confusion covereth us, for we have sinned, for we have sinned against the Lord our God, we and our fathers from our youth, even unto this day, and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God." Has anything changed in two, three thousand years? No, nothing's changed. Everything's about the same. Technology might change, but the heart of man doesn't change. So in Jeremiah 3, God divorces Israel. But if we go to Jeremiah 31, 31, 31, 31, We read, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant, new covenant with the house of Israel and 
with the house of Judah. Not the same. Israel and Judah. A new covenant. Don't listen to the Hebrew roots heretics. They'll tell you, oh, no, no, no. It's not a new covenant. No, no. It's a renewed covenant. Yeah, it, it didn't work the first time, but God's going to give it a second chance, another go, and we're going to make it work this time. Jesus told the Pharisees that they knew the law, but none of you keep it. We can't keep the law. I heard there was like over 500 laws. All you got to do is break one one time and you're done. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. And what did Jesus say? The Last Supper, the bread was his body and the wine was his blood. That's the new covenant. Yeah. Verse 32 how could it be the, the renewed covenant when in verse 32 we read the following? Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them, to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. They broke the covenant, not the Lord. Although I was not husband unto them, saith the Lord. No, it's not going to be the same covenant that they made with the Lord in Egypt. It's not the same. Hebrew roots people, heretics don't even, they, they, they're deceivers. Deceivers and being deceived. That is their thing, yeah. Verse 33. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts. Inward parts, not on a table of stone. He's going to write the law in our hearts. And I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts. And they will be, oh, and will be their God and they shall be my people. No, they want you to keep laws written on a table of stone. God wants you to keep the law written in your hearts. Verse 34. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord. For they shall all know me, from the least of them, that's going to be me, unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Thus saith the Lord, which giveth the sun for a light by day, and the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divideth the sea when the waves thereof roar, the Lord of hosts is his name. If those ordinances depart from before me, saith the Lord, you know, if, if the sun and the moon disappear, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. Thus saith the Lord, If heaven above can be measured and the foundations of the earth searched out beneath, I will also cast off, cast off all the seed of Israel for all that they have done, saith the Lord. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the city shall be built to the Lord from the tower of Hananiel unto the gate of the corner, and the measuring line shall yet go forth over against it un upon the hill Gerub, and shall compass about to Goath, and the whole valley of the dead bodies and of the ashes and all the fields unto the brook of Kidron, unto the corner of the horse gate toward the east, shall be holy unto the Lord. It shall not be plucked up nor thrown down any more forever. Yep. All right, let's go to Romans chapter 1. I guess we're going to read this whole chapter. Uh, you know, people don't want to believe in Paul, but uh, I sure do. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, 
separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness, the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace. That's right. What is grace? Uh, it's unmerited favor. You know, it's something you get that you don't deserve, like mercy. Mercy and grace go together. Unmerited favor. I didn't merit any favor of the Lord by anything that I ever did, trust me. By whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name among whom also ye also the called of Jesus Christ you know there so many will tell you oh well, that's not his real name the Bible's been wrong for 2,000 years his name is Yahushua HaMashiach I don't think so verse 7 to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all. Didn't know Paul was a southerner, huh? For you all. That your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit, in the gospel of his son, that without ceasing, I make mention of you always in my prayers. How can people read this and not believe in Paul? Oh, that's right. They're not saved. Yeah. Yeah. 10. Making request, if by any means now at length, I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. For I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift... To the end ye may be established. That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. Now, I would not have you ignorant, brethren. What does it mean to be ignorant? It means you lack knowledge in something. And like I've said many times, when it comes to calculus and algebra and higher forms of math, I'm ignorant. Yeah. Now I would, I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oft, oftentimes I proposed to come unto you, but was let hitherto, that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. I am debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and up unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God hath showed it unto them. You know, when people say, well, you know, God's never showed me nothing. I don't believe it. God has showed them. Listen to this, verse 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Oh, but we, we came here by evolution. 
Uh, I don't think so. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. Look around you people, the things that are made. They came from somewhere. They just didn't go poof. Being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. You know, you can argue and say, well, the word Trinity is not in the Bible, but the word Godhead is. And God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are the Godhead. So that even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him, not as God. They didn't glorify God. Neither were thankful. You know, when, when the Lord gives you things, you should be thankful. You should read a, the book of Exodus. Everybody was complaining. Oh, Lord gave us manna. Manna for breakfast, manna for lunch, manna for dinner, manna, manna, manna. I'm sick of manna. I want some meat. Oh, yeah, I'm going to send you some quail until it comes out of your nose. Well, that's the Bob paraphrase, but yeah. God hates murmuring and he hates complaining. He hates it. If he gives you something be happy with what you have and be glad he doesn't give you what we deserve i can look in the mirror and smile about that one yeah because that when they knew god they glorified him not as god neither were thankful but became vain in their imaginations what is vain it means useless worthless Remember that song? What was it? Joni, whatever. I, I don't know. He's so vain. You're so vain. Yeah. But became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. Yeah. Our, light, our hearts should be full of light, not darkness. Verse 22. Professing themselves to be wise. Oh, I got a PhD in... Biology, evolutionary biology. Uh, we, we were just, poof, you know, lightning struck the rocks and they came alive and we went from a single cell organism to now we're humans and monkeys and elephants and giraffes and lions and tigers and whales and goldfish. I don't think so. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and change the glory of the corruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Do you know in South America they made images of serpent-like creatures, dragon-like creatures and worship them? Yeah. Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Think about San Francisco when you read this stuff. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. Vile affections. God gave them up. God gave up on them. He says, yeah, you want to live in sin? Go for it, baby. I'll let you have all you want in this life. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with, wen men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. 
Oh boy. Verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Boy, that's scary. God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters. Oh, wait, you ever see a pride parade? Uh, our pride event? Yeah, well, yeah, never mind. Backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God. You think these people don't know the judgment of God? Yes, they do. The Bible tells me they do. Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure, but have pleasure, but have pleasure in them that do them. I told you this was pleasure part two. Yeah. Yeah. But knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Oh, yeah. You want to have pleasure in this world? You want to have riches? You want to have fame and fortune? A lot of times God will give you what you want in this world because you don't want the things of the Lord. He'll give you the things of this world. Remember the story about the rich man and Lazarus? The rich man had it all. Fine clothing, a nice place to live, good food. What did Lazarus have? The crumbs that fell from the rich man's table and sores that the dogs licked. But the difference between Lazarus and the rich, rich man was Lazarus had God. He had the love of God in him. Yeah. But in the end, Lazarus was comforted and the rich man was tormented in the flames. Let's read some Paul. You know, the, peop the people that say Paul's a false apostle. 2 Thessalonians 1 and verse 11. Wherefore also we pray always for you. We pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. All right, let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. We're going to read, I guess, the whole chapter. You know, people, this wicked world is going to want a Savior. God promised that there'd be wars, famines, disease. When the world is wicked, those things are going to happen. And the world's going to be looking for a Savior. All these pre-tribbers, a lot of them are going to probably end up in trouble. I moved from Florida to Tennessee to be part of a church. And I, I remember the pastor saying, well, I'm not looking for G, uh, the Antichrist. I'm looking for Jesus Christ. Well, being that the Antichrist comes first, your Messiah is going to be the Antichrist. Oh, we're going to be flying up in the air. Uh, yeah, at the end of the tribulation, you idiot. Well, I don't think he was an idiot. I think he was a deceiver. Probably possessed of a devil. I thought he was all right, but of course, that was like 20 years ago. 
back when I actually still trusted some of these people. You can't reform Babylon. Impossible. Babylon's in their heart and minds. It's Thessalonians chapter, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. Talking about the end times. You know, there's a whole group of people called preterists. They'll tell you that, oh, well, this happened in 70 AD. Well, you're going to tell me that the Antichrist came in 70 AD? Uh, yeah, and, and they want you to think that the, the next Messiah that comes is, the, is Christ. You know, that's why I tell you people, if we're not caught up in the air, it's the wrong Messiah. I know I've beat that over and over and over, but it, that's going to be important. If we're not caught up in the air, it's the wrong Messiah. Ugh. Gosh, I hate these deceivers. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. This is talking about the second coming and our being gathered to, together with Christ. Period. Oh, this is why they hate Paul. Yeah, because they don't want you to know this information. That's why you should know it by heart. Verse 2, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. Matthew 24, Mark 13, Jesus said, be not deceived. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day, what day? Second coming. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. Has the faith of Christ fallen away? Is Christianity falling away? Well, let's take a look. In the United States, you got a Church of Satan. Abortion's legal. S gay marriage. Yeah, uh, okay, yeah, check, check, check. Yeah, it's falling away. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. This in the in John, in the book of Revelation, calls him the beast. And I think it's Paul in another place calls him the Antichrist. But there's more than one. Yeah, there's a whole group of people that are anti-Christ. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And of course they'll tell you that the one taken out of the way is the church, but I don't believe that. I, and they'll say the Holy Spirit, and I don't believe that. I think Michael is the restrainer that holds back a lot of the evil. Because Michael fought against the dragon in heaven and defeated him. Cast, he was cast out. But that's my opinion. Until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. With all power and signs, and lying wonders. Satanic miracles, people. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness, in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, 
that they might be saved. See, they loved unrighteousness. They didn't want the they didn't have any love for the truth of Christ to be saved. No, they want to live in pleasure. They want to have everything of this world. Verse 11. And for this cause, for this cause, God, not Satan, God shall send them strong delusion. What's a delusion? Believing something to be true that is not. You can get a guy in a mental institution, he could think he's Napoleon, or he could think he's Jesus. He might actually believe it, but he's not. It's a lie, but he believes it. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned. That's some strong words, people that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure, but had pleasure, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Can we say that again? But had pleasure in unrighteousness. What did we just read in Romans 1? Yeah. Do you know there's churches in San Francisco that'll tell you that they're in a committed relationship and they're saved because they believe in Jesus? Yeah, they teach that. They don't read from a King James, though. No, no, they, they read from a Queen James Bible. Yeah, it exists. There really is a, a Queen James Bible. Yeah. And no, not the Queen of England. No, a Queen as in, I, I think you get my drift. Um. Yeah, or, or an NIV. Verse 13. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, be brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning, God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Boy, there's people that hate that word, chosen and election, from the beginning. God chose his people from the beginning. Of course, they hate that unless they're talking about the, the you-know-who's in the Middle East that hate Christ. Well, oh, no, those are the chosen ones. You know, those that don't believe and hate him are chosen. Chosen for what? Like the rich man, the lake of fire? Oh, okay, never mind. Asking those kind of questions gets you kicked out of a, well, a 501c3 that they call a church. Yeah. You don't know what a 501c3? It's an American thing. Uh, it's, uh, it's how to create a, a business that's tax exempt with the name church in it. Yeah. Yeah. But we are bound to give thanks all the way to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because... God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth, whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or by epistle. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us, and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. Comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Paul writes to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 5. Uh, well, let's... Go to verse 3. Honor widows that are wind widows indeed. But if any widow have children or nephews, let them learn first to show piety at home and to requite their parents, for that is good and acceptable before God. Now she that is a widow indeed and desolate trusteth in God and continueth in supplications and prayers night and day. But 
She that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. Those that live in pleasure are dead spiritually, even though they live in the flesh. Oh, yeah. And these things give in charge that they might be blameless. But if any provide not for his own, and especially of those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. You know who fits this uh, last verse? That didn't provide for his own? Schofield. Yeah, the Schofield Reference Bible. He dumped his wife and children. Even when he was rich from his Bible sales. sales. Did he provide for his kids? No. Nothing. He was worse than an infidel, according to Paul. But uh, Baptists swear by his book. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Let's go to James chapter 5. Pleasure. Yeah. Go to now, ye rich men. Weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered and the rust of them shall be a witness against you. And ye shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. Behold, the higher of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, crieth. And the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. What does this mean? It means you hired people to, to reap your field, to go work in your farm. And then when it came time to pay them, you stiffed them. You didn't pay them. You kept back by fraud. You know, there's a thing in the tall mud. Take those two words and put them together and re remove the L. They got a thing that they do every year where uh, they say, well, you know, all every promise that I make is null and void. So when I make a promise to you to pay you, I'm not... I'm not sinning when I don't keep my promise because I've already told God I'm not going to keep any of my promises. And I'm, yeah. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, write me and I'll show you the prayer that they do. The hypocrites. Yeah, Jesus called them hypocrites. And he wasn't talking to the Romans, by the way. Yep. You, that's how people get rich, by not paying other people. Uh, Walmart was famous for that. Yeah, they would uh, they would hire people to do jobs for them, not pay them, wait for them to go into bankruptcy, run to the bankruptcy court and say, well, yeah, I've got, you know, a million dollars worth of goods here this little business did for me. I'll, I'll give you $50,000 in bankruptcy court for that million dollars worth of uh, product that they made for me. Yeah. They've driven a lot of small businesses out of business. They're horrible business practices. Richest people in the some of the some of the richest people in the world. You think they would ever do anything for anybody? No. No. They they wouldn't even spit on you if you're on fire. I'm sure. Oh, I don't want to get smoke on my nice silk shirt. You know. But the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. Ye have lived in pleasure on the earth. Yeah, you rich people, you've lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanton. Ye have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. Ye have condemned and killed the just, and he doth not resist you. You know, rich people will, they'll kill to steal your wealth or your ideas. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You have condemned and killed the just, and he doth not resist you. 
Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he receive the early and latter rain. Be ye patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Judge not one another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Take, my brethren, the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Yeah, they used to kill the prophets. 11. Behold, we count them happy which endure. You've heard of the patience of Job and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. But above all things, my brethren, swear not... And we're not talking about cuss words. Swear not, neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be let yea, let your yes be yes, and your nay be nay. Let your yes be yes, and your no's be no, lest ye fall into condemnation. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if, ha and if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another. Boy, if I did that, we'd be here for probably a hundred years. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And people don't think I'm ungrateful for those of you that pray for me. I honestly appreciate it. I know there's a number of you that do because that's probably the only reason why I'm still around. I mean, seriously, I used to get death threats. And I'm surprised Tube hasn't booted me off. So. The effectual fervent prayer, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth, by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, and one convert him, let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his ways shall save a soul from death, and shall hide a multitude of sins. No soul winners are going to be, uh, those that try to win souls are going to be, if they can help bring a, Lord, a soul to the Lord Jesus, that's going to hide a whole bunch of their sins. Believe me. A whole bunch. All right, let's go to 2 Peter chapter 2. Oh, yeah. And this will probably close it out. 2 Peter chapter 2. And there's people who will tell you that 2 Peter chapter 2 doesn't belong in the Bible. Why? They'll say, oh, Peter didn't write that because 2 Peter affirms Paul as an apostle. And they don't like Paul, so they don't like Peter either. 2 Peter chapter 2, but verse 1. But there were false apostles. I'm sorry. For there were false prophets. Yeah, every single pre-tripper on TBN. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and shall bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow, the, follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Yeah. You teach the truth and they'll... They'll, yeah. If you tell people they should, you know, 
keep the laws of the Lord, they'll say, oh, well, you believe in lordship salvation. They call that a heresy. Or if you dare believe that G uh, Christians are God's chosen people, oh, you're a Calvinist. How horrible is that? Who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction? And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by evil of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness. What is covetousness? They're greedy. They shall with feigned words make merchandise of you. Yeah, send God your donation to Preacher Cheatham and Howe of TBN. Send your donation to God. Here's our address, please. Whose judgment is of a now, whose judgment now is of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Their damnation doesn't sleep, people. Verse 4 For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, ashes, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemning them with an overthrow, making them an ensample unto those that after should live ungodly and delivered just lot vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked for that righteous man living among them and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds the lord knoweth how to deliver the uh, how to deliver the godly out of temptations the lord knows how to deliver the good people out of temptations believe it and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government, presumptuous are they, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Whereas angels, angels which are greater in power and might, bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. But these as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption, and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they that count it pleasure, as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. You want to live in pleasure? Go for it, big dog. Lord's got a place for you. As they that count it pleasure to ride in the daytime. Spots are they. Spots they are. And blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls. What is beguiling? Seducing, spiritually, physically, whatever. Beguiling unstable souls and heart they have exercised with covetous practices. Cursed children, cursed children, which have forsaken the right way and gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. Balaam was a prophet of the Lord. But he loved money. And the enemies of the Lord hired him to curse Israel. Yeah, oh, you never read that? That's in the book of Numbers, I think. But was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumbass speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. The Lord had his donkey speak to him. These are wells without water. Clouds are carried with a tempest to whom the midst of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, 
through much wantonness. Those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. While they promised them liberty, they promised them liberty. They themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. If after they have escaped the pollutions of the world, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it, hit, for it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. You know, it's better not to have known at all and to live in sin than to know the way of righteousness and then turn away from it. You'd be better off. Verse 22. But it is happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned to his own vomit again. And the sow, the pig, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. You could take a, a, a swine, you could take a pig, and you can wash it. You can baptize it. And it can say, I believe in Jesus. And it'll turn back into the mud hole. It'll turn right back to the pig pen of this world. Even the prodigal son knew when he was eating the, the husk that the swine were eating. He finally came to himself and says, I'm going to return to my father and tell him I have sinned. But you know, there comes a time when the Lord closes the door. Remember, the Ark of Noah, it was the Lord that closed up the door. The Lord closed the door of the Ark. Not Noah, not his sons, not their wives. The Lord closed the door. And then the rain came, and the fountains of the deep were opened. And they drowned the evil ones. So, what can I tell you? And by the way, the stuff I can't put on tube, I'm putting on uh, Telegram. I'll try to remember to put a link. Because I'm putting stuff on Telegram that I dare not put on you know where because of the you know who's. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.